This is the Roots and All Budcast, presented by Sarah Wilson. Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. Thank you for joining me. This week, I'm going to be talking about those jobs you should be doing or are thinking about doing now. It's been a lovely sunny week in Sussex, but it does feel a little bit like the last gasp of summer before the weather really turns. Because the weather's been good this summer, I'm subconsciously pushing against the the summer ending and I'm pretending to myself that winter can't really be coming. Um, And I'm also a bit lazy and slapdash, so I haven't cleared my greenhouse and shed out yet, ready to accommodate the bulbs and tender perennials that will soon need to go in it. Um, you may have already experienced cold temperatures where you are. Here in the southeast, we've experienced temperatures down to about five degrees overnight, which has been far too cold for my house plants. Some of which, of course, are still outside. Um, most are fine, but I did notice some brown leaves on a couple of plants. Um, there are plants that I grew from seed that I collected in Thailand, and I've got absolutely no idea what they're going to be. Um, The cold did finish off the bigger leaves, but thankfully the new growth seems unaffected. So just a quick word about bringing plants home from abroad to the UK. Um, It's okay to bring most seeds back, but not plant material. And that's because plant material may harbour pests or diseases. And I pinched the seeds I brought home from a plant that was growing in the grounds of the hotel where we were staying. But as a general rule of thumb, you shouldn't be pinching bits of plants out of the wild. And when we were in Thailand, we were lucky enough to be taken through the jungle by a guide who lived and worked with his family in that area. And he was very keen to stress that um, the Thai people where he lives have historically seen the jungle as a closed system. So things begin and end their lives there. And he was very much against anything being taken away, even a fallen leaf or a piece of rock. Um, So that was me deterred from taking seeds from the jungle. Um, Anyway, enough of my plant thievery. Back to the tender plants. Now is definitely the time to bring in any of your house plants that you've still got outside, like your cacti and your succulents. Um, I've still got my crassula, ovata or money plant outside, so um, get those in now. Um, Be prepared to lift your dahlias once they've been subjected to a frost. You'll know when they're ready because the foliage will just collapse into mush. I'd get things like your tender salvias lifted um, and indoors. And if there's anything in your summer containers that you want to save, now is probably the time to start getting them under glass. Um, If you're bringing your house plants back indoors, be particularly vigilant for pests because the increase in warmth they're exposed to um, could lead to a sudden growth explosion of things like mealybug. So do watch out for those. And the other thing to watch with your house plants is that when you put your heating on, if you haven't done it already, you'll probably find out that they'll start drying out more quickly, again, due to the rise in temperature in your house. And for that reason, you should probably increase the frequency with which you're misting them. And this should help deter some of the pests that might be lurking in wait on your plants. So last week I had the immense pleasure of visiting Jackie Curry, who's the owner of the National Collection of Alliums. And I interviewed Jackie about Alliums for the next episode of the podcast. So if you've not already subscribed in iTunes, please do subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you haven't already ordered your Alliums for next year, and there's still plenty of time to do this, have a listen to that episode, which is out next Tuesday, the 8th of October, because she does give some brilliant advice about which varieties you can pick and which ones will will do well in your garden long term. And apart from learning about alliums, I also learned from Jackie a little bit, bit about Plant Heritage, which is the charity that administers the National Plant Collection Scheme. Um, I think a lot of people believe the scheme is overseen by an organisation like the RHS, but it's not. It's Plant Heritage and they are doing really important conservation work that I think could do with all the support that you can get at the moment. Um, You can become a member of Plant Heritage if you're interested by going to their website, which is n for national, ccpg.com. But if you're a really keen grower, you might be interested in becoming a national collection holder yourself. And if you think you don't have the room or expertise to do it, um, let me tell you that Jackie holds the National Collection of Alliums on her allotment plot. And I don't think it would be unreasonable to say that she's learned a lot about alliums since she started the collection. And I think she'd probably also agree that there's still an awful lot more to be found out about alliums. So 
don't feel you need to be an expert to start with. Um, and also, if, if you think the plant um, genera that are missing from the National Collection Scheme are some random alpines, you'll probably be staggered. Um, there is currently no national collection of things like Achilles, hollyhocks, borage, which would be a good one for those who grow edible plants, um, aspidistras, one for the houseplant collectors. Um, in fact, there are loads of houseplants on there. Um, Monstera doesn't have a national collection at the moment. So if you're a keen grower of those, I don't know how many species there are, um, but it might be worth looking into. Um, and things like eryngiums, lavateras, snapdragons, nasturtiums, stachys, deeper. If you've got more space, there, there are shrubs and things like rabinias. Um, there's other perennials like the, the lictrums. The list is huge. So if you are interested in that, do go on the website and have a look around um, because plant heritage and conservation is a really important thing. And if it's something you might be interested in, that would be a really good place to start. Um, the other sorts of things I'm doing in my garden at the moment and in other people's gardens is planning big changes. So um, I know that I need to plant a windbreak hedge along one side of my garden. So I'm going to start looking at ordering that and getting it planted. Um, a client has been asking me to order plants for a shrub border, but I've been putting them off because I know they want to get the plants in. But I also know that with the dry weather we've been having, um, no matter how diligent they were with the watering, it will be a lot better for the plants to go in over the next month or so. Um, they'll still need watering unless it tips down solidly, uh, but they'll be a lot less stressed. And people often think that spring is the time to make big changes in a garden, but I have some groundwork to do and some new ground that needs cultivating. So I'll be drawing up some plans in the next week or so, then organising the machinery to come along and dig what needs digging um, before the ground gets too wet. Because when you're dealing with clay soil, like I am here in Sussex, you get about two weeks in autumn and then another two weeks in spring when the ground is good enough to work and it isn't either rock solid and dry or sticky, heavy mess. Um, and the one thing that I never get caught napping on at this time of the year because I hate being cold is sorting out my winter gardening gear. Sadly, gardening clothes don't last that long with me. They usually end up getting torn or fall into bits through wear and tear pretty quickly. So I normally end up replacing my boots, my waterproofs and my heavy coat on a yearly basis. And winter boots are always an important thing for me to get right. I usually spend weeks and weeks shopping for the right pair. In fact, I've had my eye out for a pair since the summer. Um, and this year I've taken on the challenge of finding myself a pair that don't contain any animal products or byproducts. And it's proved, proven to be an absolute mission. So if you're interested in buying some boots that are vegetarian or vegan friendly, you might want to check out my blog post about it, which if it isn't already live, uh, will be up on the Roots and All website in the next couple of days. Um, I've cut this episode a little bit short because my neighbour has decided to have an oak tree cut down right on our boundary. And I'm not sure if you can hear the chainsaws and shredder in the background um but i heard him say to the tree surgeon oh it's a shame to cut it down really uh, which i didn't think really he believes otherwise he wouldn't be cutting it down in the first place um and oak trees can support 350 species of insects alone but never mind that tony as long as you don't get leaves on your driveway well thanks for listening i hope you have a good week and i'll catch you next tuesday For more information, visit the Roots and All website at rootsandall.co.uk. To download more episodes, visit iTunes, your favourite podcast provider, or get them direct from our website.